Good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin and I am the Dream Decipherer and I help you crack the code of your sleeping dreams so you can sleep sound and dream deep. Tonight I'm departing from my, my usual routine and instead of telling you about a dream, I'm going to share with you a good friend and colleague of mine called Bawa Cummins. Now, just to give you a brief, <laughs> brief intro before Pamela introduces herself, we met because I was scouting around trying to find people who work with dreams like I do. And there were a couple of people that I contacted, never got a reply, but Pamela did. And I'm so glad she did. Because <laughs> we found, I found a kindred spirit. But I'm going to let you, Pamela tell you a little bit about herself before we get into our, our subject for tonight. So Pamela, over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Sheila, first of all, for having me on here. I'm, I'm happy to be with you and I am happy we connected too. Kindred Spirits is correct. And um, just a little bit about myself. I have been a dreamer my whole life. I can remember dreams when I was five or six years old. I um, started really getting serious about dream dream interpretation and I started with my own to heal some childhood stuff back in the early 90s okay mm -hmm. and I just I worked with a therapist who specialized in dream interpretation and mm -hmm. she taught me a lot and what I found was by interpreting my dreams I became happier I became healthier I tapped into my psychic abilities because I had repressed them as a childhood in my childhood it wasn't safe and life mm -hmm. just became better and uh, so many solutions and because it made my life better. And of course I did other, used other tools besides dream interpretation for my spiritual and personal growth. I decided to help other people with it. And it naturally went into my practice. And I love, I love dream interpretation. I love, I like <laughs> cracking the whole code. I think of it as like putting together a puzzle, little pieces. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. it's just, so much fun so that's it is a it is i love it <laughs> i agree with you on that a hundred percent um for me it like you say it, it may be like putting a fitting a puzzle together mm -hmm. for me it's it's you know each dream has its own um well dreams have their own language you have to approach them in a particular way um each dreamer is different each dream a dreamer has is different so it's it's about getting finding out what those that basic code is for that particular dreamer and then being able to crack that code so that the, the dream makes sense you get the gold in the gobbledygook as i like to say <laughs> the gold in the gold. <laughs> yeah and it's and it's like um sometimes i mean i understand people need dream dictionaries i combine i compare them to like learning your ABCs. You need to learn your ABCs in order to write words and sentences and paragraphs, but they're just a tool. And that's mm -hmm. why I'd like to burn all dream dictionaries because they're they're like looking, <laughs> they're like, and that's a little mean, but it's like looking at your, your horoscope <laughs> on the internet. You're gonna find, mm -hmm. like I'm a Libra, I'm gonna find for today, I'm gonna find so many different horoscopes. So it's the opinion of the author and their experience. It's not to say yeah. that there aren't some basic, but you need to find mm -hmm. out what does a symbol mean to you? That's so yeah. important. And then that's, yeah. that's just a little bit of the code. So I love that cracking the code. <laughs> well, um, you know, it, it, I, I keep telling people when they say, well, what about dream books? And it's like, listen, if dream books, dream books can apply to 8 billion people on the planet. So unless that dream book takes into account, you're having a fight with your partner, you hate your boss, you always wanted to be a ballerina and your kids are driving you crazy. I don't know how that book is going to help you. <laughs> simple, as simple as that. But um, that's a good turn for a little bit from there because it's particularly pertinent to the, the subject we're talking about tonight which is um, dreams that feature um, people from uh, loved ones in particular, but people um, who are in spirit, who are 
um, not with us physically, but still remain around us. Um, the world is a much bigger place than we see, than what we see. Um, I know from personal experience, particularly when I was working as a psychotherapist doing uh, bereavement counseling, I would often have people come to me about um, they, you know, they if once they knew I dr worked with dreams. Oh, you know, I dreamt about my husband, my this, my that, the other. Um, and we would work through that. And it was part of their healing process. Um, I've had experiences like that when my, my first husband passed away. I was dreaming about him. And I knew I was dreaming. It was like a lucid dream. I knew I was dreaming, but I couldn't seem to wake, <laughs> wake up. It was really quite weird. Um, but... And that happened for over a period of time. But I said, as I moved through the grief, um, it happened less and less and then finally stopped. But what's your take on this? I mean, I'm sure that you must have had, probably have had experiences or worked with people who have. Of course. In fact, this is like my blogs on dreams of the deceased are the most popular blogs. I'm constantly getting hits on it. I'm constantly getting questions about it. Um, mm. and, and it's a topic that I love. And personally, I, a lot of times I get dreams before they pass away. That happens to me a lot. I've had yeah. it happen. Prophetic with dreams. Mom, yeah. Yeah. With, with two of my cats and like, it's a precognitive dream. I call my heads up dream. Like, Hey, Pamela, this is going to happen, you know, yeah. to prepare me for the grief. Not always, but yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, when it comes to visitation dreams, I, I think I feel there's three categories. You know, I love my categories, right? <laughs> um, and the first is an actual visitation. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's they actually come and visit you. And that can happen at any time. Sometimes when, a lot of times it happens when they just pass to say, Hey, I'm okay. Special, yeah. you know, occasions. Um, and then there's the, I call them the resolving issue with the departed loved one. Hey, I'm angry. Mm -hmm. You passed. Hey, we had these problems, you know, um, whatever your issue is with them, you have those. Okay. And then there's a combination of both. Like sometimes you could be having a dream. Um, like we were talking about my stepmom earlier. I love my stepmom, but she was an A personality. And there's some things that have happened in the past that bother me. So I could be having a dream about that and she could be up in heaven and saying, well, my step stepdaughter Pamela is having this dream. Let me come and, you know, and I would like to make amends for it, or I want to help her heal this because I love her. And then she comes into the dream. Okay. And it can happen the other way where let's say I'm dreaming, my stepmom visits me. Okay. And, it, and it's a beautiful visit, but I still have some issues that I need to resolve. The next dream scene can go into that. So that's the way I personally look at visitations. I hope that makes sense to you. Yeah, it does. It really does. I mean, I can I give you a account uh, uh, event in my own life when my husband passed away back in July. About two weeks or so later, um, I was awake as it happened, but I had it kind of went into this kind of mental state, sort of like a dream state while awake. And he appeared to me just like he did, for, looking just like he did when we met. And he, my husband passed away from cancer. Right. So, I mean, to see how we look, yeah. looking like he did when we first met, it was just like, oh, so now you've got a nice full head of hair again. Lovely. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, but other visitations since then um, where um, instructions may have been given or information passed on. Right. Um, I was told about get on with writing my book. <laughs> I'm working on a new book and they're like, get on with it. Um, you know, it, it's, it'll do, it'll do you good in lots of ways. Get on with it. So um, like you said, they come sometimes to give us instructions, sometimes just for comfort, um, particularly when we're feeling low or, right. you know, you know, maybe still be heavily in grief. But um, I think it's also just to let us know that to expand our view of the world as well. 
that, you know, the world isn't just what, we, you know, the, our five senses can perceive. Um, and uh, a lot of people either ignore that fact or they're unaware of that fact. And I think these visitations, particularly in dreams, because I think if it, it happened when we were awake, there'd be a lot of freaked out people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so my sister was like that. She was able to see spirits awake, and she she had that experience when she was very young. I think she's old. She was older than me, but she was about five six years old, and she saw our grandmother in spirit standing next to my grand our grandfather who was alive, and it just totally freaked her. So she's like, "Talk to me, in my dreams." I don't want to know. I don't want you talking to me. <laughs> Wait, talk to and they would talk 19 to the dozen in her dreams. Mm. But, you know, so it, I think that may be a, a, a more gentle way, perhaps, <laughs> of um, our loved ones wanting to communicate with us and let us let us know that they're still there and they still love us and support us. Right. I, another reason why they come in our dreams, too, is because it's easier especially when they just cross, they don't know how to visit the earth plane so much. And yeah. the way I like to describe it is because we're in solid form, the earth plane, we buy very low. Okay. <laughs> we are at a lower <laughs> vibration, right? Yes. When we dream. So that's why we don't notice spirits or whatever. Not everybody. I mean, I do, but not everybody does. Okay. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. when we dream, we're at a much higher vibration. Since we're at a, yeah. such a high vibration, it's much easier for them to travel instead of the low vibration. It's easier to meet us in the dream time. Halfway. Yeah, halfway. I, right. Yeah, I call it the in-between state. Right. Um, exactly. You're not fully here, but you're not fully there either. So you're somewhere in the middle where, you know, you can meet. Um, I do believe that. Uh, like you say, our vibrations are much faster and higher um, in the dream or semi-unconscious state so that it is easier to receive those communications. Um, I, I, you know, I, I just wonder what people's thoughts are. I mean, what would, how people generally react to these things? Or do they think they're, some of them just think they're plain stone crazy. Right. <laughs> it's like, what is this kind of thing? Um, but others, most people I find, are uh, comforted um, right. that their loved ones aren't completely gone, but they could never completely be gone. I mean, if they're family, they're part of your DNA. They're not gone. They're in you. <laughs> you yeah, know, but, and I think. But there's a, but there's a thing. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Like, you know, no, no, no. my cat Merlin. OK, like mm -hmm. I know he's still with me. When he, the day he passed, I actually felt his energy engulf me and it was beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I know he's like, he's was a part of my life. He's still with me. Okay. Um, he'll visit me from time to time, but I can't pick him up and hug him. No, you know, no. I can't yeah. kiss him. And that's, that's <laughs> what we miss, whether it's, you know, a, a pet or, you know, a loved one. We, we miss picking up the phone and calling them. Sure. Or, or yeah. Email. It's it's those things. Those yes, everything. the little things. Yeah. Having a meal with them. Oh, how, yeah. how did you like my new haircut? Did you notice my new haircut? <laughs> those little silly things. Yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> you know, and it it does. You're right. Sorry to cut you off now, but you're right. It is. Um, it's that physical presence that, that right. is the hardest to get rid to, to release. Mm -hmm. Um, I know for me, it's been, um, I remember, especially in the beginning, oh, I need to tell. And then I'd stop. It's like, no, 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 no. You can't tell them they're not here. Mm -hmm. Um, or I need to go and get such and such. No, I don't need to do that anymore. So it, it is, it's the little things that almost trip you up. <laughs> well, my, one of my sister's um, <clears throat> niece by marriage, her mother mm -hmm. passed. And she's taking it really hard. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she was at a department <sighs> store. Okay. Oh. And she wanted to return a shirt that was on her mom's account. And, and the woman's like, and she wanted the money. And the woman's like, well, why can't we put it on your mother's account? And she just broke down. She's dead, you know? <laughs> and oh, dear, so, poor yeah. Thing. And it's like those 
those little things, but you know, the little things are the important things. Do you know yeah. what I mean? When they, when Absolutely. they, pass, those are the important things. And like your husband coming to you. And I know that when I cross, I don't want to look like I was on my deathbed. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. yeah I don't want to look good, even dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so your husband uh, come to you with a full head of hair when he looked his best. And that's, and that's a sign of love because he's presenting yeah. his best side to you. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, I mean, it, it's a nice way to put it, I think. Uh, but I, that seems to be something that happens quite often with people. Um, when they cross over, when people see them again in dreams and whatnot, they're usually younger. They're usually, you know, maybe in, in like the, maybe in the prime of their life, their 30s or early 40s or whatever it is. But they always seem to, to go back in time, you know, when they felt maybe felt their best or, right. or were at their best. So that, and that's the appearance that they give. It's quite, quite extraordinary. I've, I think I've heard that across the board. Oh, yeah. I haven't heard anybody say that they've seen, you know, loved ones who have passed over in um, looking as they did when they were older or after they had become ill, if they had died of illness. Um, they always seem to come back, you know, yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm looking good now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, 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 I, I, and I understand that. And But you made a good point. Like, if they look ill, okay, or like what they did, you know, before they passed older, that's usually a sign that it's like an unresolved issue that you have with them mm. because you're dreaming okay. of the past. Mm. Okay. So that's that's one way to look at it. Not to say, you know, some people might like the way they look when they were older than younger, or they yeah. might feel maybe they had a really bad past. They're, you know, their teens, their sure. 30s, 40s, and the prime of their life was maybe when they were in their 60s, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I guess yeah. It, it can vary as well. I mean, and I think it may even vary from person to person. You know, they may appear slightly differently to to a grandchild than they did would to their spouse or somebody who was their contemporary in some way. I perhaps only yeah. because of the recognition factor. Um, right. You know, a grandchild wouldn't re may not recognize their grandparent. You know, point. when they were when they were younger because they were too young or they weren't even born yet. Um, so, you know, to, to the appearance that um, the person is most used to, I think. Right. Right. Uh, right. It, well, it's, it's the same thing like when we cross over, you hear some from near death experiences how when people are visited, when they meet, go cross to the other uh, side. It, mm -hmm. If you're Christian, it could be Jew, uh, Jesus. If you're a Buddhist, it might be Buddha. If you're mm -hmm don't believe in religion or have a different type of spirituality, it might be a family member, it could be a pet, sure. you know, it could be just an angelic being. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think it, like you said, depends on the circumstance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, just to, to change the um, direction slightly, for people who are, who may be watching and listening to this, I just wonder what what can we say or what can we do as people who work with dreams to help people? Because some people may just be frightened out of their gourd by the experience. You know, why am I dreaming? You know, kind of they go a little bit crazy because they're having these dreams. And like you said, and when I, I think they become... Um, this, when it becomes a, almost repetitive in nature... That, like you say, there is some kind of issue that needs to be resolved. Um, and one tip that I would give to a person is, like, write them a letter. Believe it or not, I laugh. There's a thing on, on Instagram where somebody who's, um, they read, they're a card reader, a tarot reader, but they tune into messages from the other side. So they're always writing down these little messages and some of them are quite specific, you know, like Janie, you didn't do this or 
I saw what you did. You need to stop. <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious. But others saying, you know, it was, you know, don't feel bad. It was my time. Um, I'm okay. I'm with their family. We're, you know, that kind of thing. So I would say they do get, they, because they were, they can see, you know, us as, whereas we can't see them. If you write a letter um, or maybe record something, they'll get it. They'll hear it. They'll see it. Um, and they will actually make some attempt or they will make an effort to show you or indicate to you that the message was received. Um, Cause I did, I don't know what I was doing the other day. And I got a message exactly from this thing where it was like, it was oh so specific. It's like, oh, okay. You got the message. All right then. <laughs> right. Cause I had actually put something um, I put a copy of the the um, the program from when we got married in my husband's suit pocket um, when for the you know when he was buried or when he, the funeral took place, and I, there was a message. It's like I got what you put in my pocket, and <laughs> and it was lovely. I, it was a lovely memory. So I mean, so it was like, oh, okay, that's good. You know, you saw what I did. Um, so. I think that people, rather than being afraid um, to to reach out and communicate, um, maybe just writing their feelings down, especially if they were unresolved issues, right. may be a good way to kind of work through that. Um, but believe me, they will hear it. They will get the message um, and they probably will communicate that fact in some way, maybe in a dream. <laughs> or something well, somebody says. I'd like to add that, you know, if you don't feel comfortable writing it down or saying it out loud, if, you know, you can go to where they were buried too. Or yeah, look, sure. at, look at a picture of them. But get mm -hmm. it all out. And you know what? Don't worry about, you know, if you need to curse them out, you know, depending <laughs> on what you, you curse them out. You, you get it out. Get and it out. Feel, and, that's what, and that's what's going to bring forgiveness and they will come to you whether it's a dream i know like my mom smoked cigarettes so sometimes when i'm driving down the road and believe me i non-smoker <laughs> i'll smell her cigarettes okay mm -hmm. or you can sense them or you'll hear a song by them you know i get when my stepmom mm -hmm. passed i got a vision of her with you know her mom and then with my two aunts hanging out mm -hmm. so it or you might all of a sudden like a picture will fall off the wall or their, <laughs> or their phone number will, will come up. And I want to say, don't be scared. OK, yeah. Th that's what I want to say. I know it's easier said than done, but trying to embrace them and know that you have the power. And that's even when it's somebody who you hated or you feel like there's an evil presence. You have the power. And if you're really scared, call upon Jesus, Archangel Micah. Michael, Buddha, the goddess, whoever you feel to, to feel mm. comfortable. But yeah. usually if it's a loved one, they're not there to, you know, they might, to play, harm. Around. They might play around, like, let me flick, flick the lights on and off. You know? Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, it, no, I laughed because I the other day, this was a while, about a month ago now, um, I was doing something, I was looking for some music, and I, for whatever reason, I had the remote control in my hand, and the the urn with my husband's ashes was nearby. So it's, and I set the the not thinking. I set it down thinking I was putting it on the speaker. I actually put it on the the urn itself because it's a wooden beautiful wooden box, painted box. And then I stopped and I started laughing. It's like you're still hogging the remote. For God's sake, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> Just had to laugh. It's like, oh my God, you're still holding on to that damn my remote control. So, you know, it's like funny little things like that, that, that let you know that, you know, their, their, their energy is still there. They're still loving you. They're still hoping to guide and protect you. I mean, I've been told that he, he says, I'm one of your guides now, but I knew that when we met, I knew he was someone special to teach me. Now he's just doing it from the other side, but he was always doing it. You know, I learned a lot and grew a lot in that relationship. Um, so 
you know, they may come back to teach us things or to help us to understand things better. So it, it's a resource, <laughs> a divine resource that, that we can tap into because maybe those dreams can help clarify certain matters. Um, I know, but people who are looking for stuff, you know, they get a dream. Oh, if you look in such and such place, you'll find such, that, 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 that. So, right. I mean, they have information for us. And sometimes it's just, you know, I'm here. I love you. I haven't forgotten you. Um, you know, call me sometime. <laughs> right. and, and sometimes it's, it's not even, they might not say anything because a lot mm. of, sometimes it's telepathic, but sometimes they might not say anything. They might just come in and engulf you in a hug. I know before mm. my mom died, she, she came to me and I was having a lot of nightmares and I felt a tug on my hair. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like I was facing this way and I felt this and I was oh. scared. I was like, Oh my God. Cause I was having so many nightmares and I turned my head and I looked at her and there were no words spoken, but this, there was this feeling of love that I have mm. never had and haven't had since there were no mm. words for it. So sometimes you'll get, get that, you know? Yeah. And yeah. The, I just want to point out one thing. One of the reasons they come to us in our dreams or not in our dreams is because they let us know that life goes on. You know, yeah. for those who are afraid Absolutely. of death, you know, yeah. it's not like nobody, most people don't want to say, I want to die. I mean, we all have our times, but for those who are so afraid of death that they're not living, okay, yeah. mm -hmm. that it's important for you to know. And also, it's important to grieve, but not to get stuck in the grief. And sometimes they'll come mm. to push you out of the grief. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think that that's probably um, the best way to put it is like they're, they're there to, just as they did in life, to encourage us and support us and push us when we need it. They still do the same thing. It's the only thing that they've lost, if you will, is a, a physical body, but they're still who they are. I mm. mean, if, if, you know, if uncle Joe was a, was a mean SOB when he was alive, he's still probably going to be <laughs> a bit of that, maybe a bit calmer, yeah, you know, on the other side. They don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they don't, you know, they, but their basic personality, you will recognize them because right. they are who they are, mm. you know, it's just that they're, they're not in a physical body anymore. Right. But, this, you know, we I know we could talk about this for ages, ages, absolute ages. But if there's one comment that you would like to, to share with people about um, dreams and departed loved ones and with Halloween coming up um, and, you know, I like I like the, the way they celebrate in in Mexico with the Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, mm -hmm. where, you know, they dust off the, the, you know, they go to the, the whole family goes to the cemetery with, with, uh, you know, some agave liquor <laughs> and mm -hmm. some food, you know, little skull cakes and whatnot. And they clean off the grave and they tell them what's been going on. Like they don't already know, but <laughs> in any way, you know, they tell them, think, you know, here's the family, here's a new baby that just arrived. We already knew that, but, <laughs> you know, right. Um, but it's a time of, it's not considered a time of mourning. It's a time of celebrating the person's life. Right. And quite often around this Halloween period between the, um, the 31st, which is the All Souls or All Hallows, all, which is All Souls. Uh, I mean, All Hallows, which is All, yeah, All Souls. And then you have All Saints the next day. So, you know, they're, they're dealing with the, the mundane and the divine at the same time, but all of them in spirit. And I think that's a healthy thing, to be honest. Um, lots of people dream a lot more about their loved ones mm -hmm. around that time as well, um, which, you know, it's like the veil gets thin. Um, and so that, that in-between space expands a little bit so that, you know, they become a little bit more visible on, to us than they would be ordinarily. I can't think of anything else that we could tell people about because it's an experience. It's something that you just have to experience to understand. And I mean, people dream all the time. They may not remember, but I tell you one thing, when people dream about their loved ones who have departed, those dreams will 
stay with you. Even days, months, years later, those, those communications will stay um, because they really touch a deep part of our souls. I really believe that. They're, they're yeah. different. They're different. And yeah. speaking, mm-hmm. you know, of Halloween or Salmon, has that how they Samhain. pronounce it? Yeah, Samhain, yeah. I think it's you um, pronounce it. With the veil being thin, there are some people who want dreams of their departed loved ones, <laughs> right? Yes. They're, they're yes. Like, Why yes. haven't they come to me? Okay. Yeah. So this is a real good time to ask for them to come. Okay, into mm-hmm. your dreams, or if you prefer, give you a sign. You, can, I mean, you can do this besides Halloween because some people will say, "Well, how can I get them to come and visit in my dreams?" And it's like anything else. Ask. It's like remembering your dreams. How can you remember your dreams? Set the intention yep. for them to come there. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so that's that's important, and to be open to, and you know, some like I had a client recently. She was like. Well, you know, my mom came, but she wasn't able to speak. And I wanted her to say that she loved me and this and that. And it's like, accept the experience for what it was, you know, because we have this high expectation of how it's going to be. And sometimes it's just a look or sometimes they telepathically say, I'm okay. Sometimes it's a hug. Sometimes people will have dreams with their loved ones where they're actually what they didn't like. They might go food shopping if they did a lot of that they might be sitting at the table having a cup of tea or listening Mm -hmm. to a song you know it it can come about so any any way just but but you have to be open to it and um i think when you it's the kind of thing when you're looking for something you generally will find it um you know you have an expectation that something will be a certain way it generally turns out that way because you've created that reality um because we're creating a reality by the way we think all the time um so if you basically like you say set the intention before you go to bed right. um i will you know be open and receptive if a loved one comes and speaks to me in my dream right. and i will remember <laughs> You know, that's the important mm-hmm. thing. I mean, so wouldn't it be great to give you this whole great, you know, bit of information, then you forget it all? Well, and you know, <laughs> that does happen. Like, um, yeah, you know, you might remember little bits and pieces. You might actually mm-hmm. have like a, you know, Jesus or um, a healing angel come to you mm-hmm. and, and heal you. And you only mm-hmm. remember a little bit or you might remember the sure. feelings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but I think that, you know, that, that would probably be, this would probably be a good place to, to kind of stop because I think um, some people will have, may have trouble getting their heads around all of this, number one. So they give them, we've given them quite enough to, to, to think about and to consider and maybe um, hopefully will have kind of opened their perspective, um, you know, widened their view a little bit. Um, to make them more receptive to the idea that loved ones can and do uh, talk to us in our dreams. Right. Yeah. And I, I so, also have just pets to mm-hmm. too, you know. For oh, yes, absolutely. There, you know, absolutely. because you're saying loved ones, pets are included in that. Oh, yes. Yes, okay. absolutely. I mean, I, I still have a, a, a pet that energetically is still with me. You know, I laugh because every now and then I was talking to somebody and I was saying, oh yes, you know, my, my spirit animal is here. And I actually looked, I turned my head and actually looked, I mean, and they're like, what are you looking at? And it's like, oh, you know, they're there. I mean, I can't, you know, I just knew energetically that my pet was there, even though there was, you know, just empty space, according to the person who was with me. But I knew, you know, sometimes, you know, I actually can feel it's energetically kind of like rubbing or leaning against you, you know, kind of thing. Or but all of this. Of your bed, too. That happens. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Pamela, I think we have given people an awful lot to think about. <laughs> I hope An so. awful lot. Really. I, in a good way, I think. And I hope that um, the if people have questions 
or anything, that they would reach out, whether it be to me or to you. And in fact, right now, why don't you give some of your details where you can be reached? Because like me, you also run courses teaching people how to interpret their dreams and how to work with them. Right. So um, I'll put your details up afterwards, okay. but um, where can you be reached at? Okay, well, I have two websites. The first, you see my name, PamelaCummins.com, and you can reach mm -hmm. the Dream Interpretation one that there and then learn dream interpretation or you can actually just put pamela dream interpretator or pamela dreams and i come up in google too you might have to search okay. a little bit i might be on pamela dream <laughs> interpretator i think is on the top but they can find me there yeah. and facebook pinterest and linkedin okay so you're everywhere basically <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pamela, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Um, and I know we could go on and on and on and on, but I think people will have a, um, a better perspective, perhaps, or better understanding of why we may dream uh, about departed loved ones um, and the implications of that, whether they're there just to visit or to give us information or to, to help us to get through the grieving process. Um, among other things. Um, thank you for that. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Um, we'll maybe, maybe need to uh, every now and then do something like this and kind of compare notes. I think that would be fun. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for having me. And I'd love to come back whenever, when, whenever it's meant to be. Thank you. Um, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this slight deviation from the norm. I know I have, um, <laughs> but please, you know, if you have questions or comments, please leave them. Um, and we'll, Pamela and I will both be able to, to, to give you some answers. Thanks again for watching and listening. Have a great evening and rest of the week, and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.